Hey y'all, you got them white ass and t-shirts on. I mean socks on. Ramen noodles too. Pretty silly boy. Is he? I don't know if you guys know him well enough yet. No, but he come up to me the other Sunday and talked to me. When he was younger, you know, he'd stay in the van and stuff. When he'd be here, when y'all come out, mother. Well, he's come around now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah.
Good morning, church family. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, let's stand up and worship together. Let's go into the scripture. If we do nothing else today, we're doing the scripture. That's a good guy. If my clip were a one, that would give me a thing, too. What a surprise. Technical difficulties, right? In our scripture today, Acts chapter 7, been reading from Acts throughout the last few weeks, and today we'll be going into this story, which is about the martyr, Stephen. So today, when we're having the call to worship, as you see, the leader's going to read that much, and we'll answer, and they'll read that much again, and we'll answer. So this is a big one. Is somebody ready to be the leader that hasn't done it ever? Miss Nelly has never done it. Bring it on, Miss. Thank you. However, the Most High does not dwell in temples made with hands. As, As the, the prophet, prophet says, says, heaven is, is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house will you build for me, says the Lord, or what is the place of my rest? As, As my, my hand, hand not made all these things, let us all rejoice in God's house. And these are words spoken by Stephen, the martyr, right before they got him. And it's quoting scripture. So let us pray together. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the mercy and grace that you share with us. We do not deserve it. There's no way we can merit your love. But you give it to us anyway. You sent your son to die on a cross for us, for our sins. He never committed one and still hasn't. We thank you for that. And for calling us into this place to worship together as a church family. Let us all be of one belief. And today we will... Proclaim and affirm that belief by reciting together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Ladies. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Join me in 1882, 72, all verses. Sing its word. It sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of his precious blood, the sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus! Oh, how I love Jesus! Oh, how I love Jesus! Because he first loved me It tells me what my Father had In store for every day And though I tread a darksome path It's sunshine all the way Oh, how I love Jesus Oh, how I love 
love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. It tells of one whose loving heart can feel my deepest woe, who in each sorrow bears a part that none can bear below. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. We all may be seated. Very scary day yesterday. We were hearing about that at ball games, and uh, yeah, just be aware. We can all be targets, even easy marks, and it becomes real scary, not just monetarily. Open it up now for the prayer needs of folks. I know that we have a few online watching that are not feeling good. Jane Berry uh, put a comment that she's not feeling well today, so she's out. 
Um, Wanda's watching too, but she's at Mike has something with his picnic. Yeah, the picnic for his church, uh, Catholic church in uh, in Indiana. So yeah. they're out. Uh, pray for poor Barb and Casey sitting on a beach right now. Actually, they're in worship at a church yeah. at the beach, yeah. so, which is really cool. Yeah. But, uh, Chris is uh, has taken the Awake Men to an all black church in Franklin, so they are worshiping hard this morning. So, open it up to you all. Miss Nelly. I don't want anything. I'm just praising God. Praising God. I love it. That's something. That's not nothing. That's a big something. Yes, ma'am. Miss Linda. Well, I want to thank the Lord for giving my son-in-law a job. It took four months. Couldn't find and found one. Uh, he has a unique occupation, so it's kind of hard. <coughs> so he, he just walked in one day at the hospital. He worked there 17 years. surgical department over to the U of L. So he had 10 minutes to get his things and leave. And, um, and then God opened the opportunity for him to work for a pain management clinic in downtown Lowell. Right. So he starts my Is that Thomas? Thomas. Yeah. All right, Thomas. And then my grandson is making slow progress at the PT, but uh, he's now able to close his hand this fall. So it's going to take a lot. They told him when I took him last week that it was a slow, slow process. And that's the hand that they said he might not even have at one well, point. Well, he's very right? lucky that yeah. he even has his hand. Mm -hmm. so. Progress for Ryan Sloan, too. Praises. Who else today do we bring up? Taylor. Cliff Stuckey, who has been in our church a few times, so having issues, you say. Yes. Okay. It's adding up, isn't it? I mentioned prayers uh, as Taylor speaks. Uh, public schools have begun it. And that impacts most families in this room. And if you're not in public schools, there's a whole lot of homeschool families in this room, too. So the school is back. Pray for the kids. Pray for the teachers. Pray for everybody involved. A lot of mess going on in Jefferson County, as you surely know with us. Is we were dealing with the uh, issues in Oldham County schools when I was teaching. They were coming to the final 10 or 12 years. It never got that bad, but it's bad everywhere. Uh, what's going on in Google is terrible. Pray for the kids. Pray for the teachers. Pray for all the staff. And pray for the right things to be taught. As you know that there's more indoctrination than there is education going on right now in a lot of ways. And I want to thank the ladies yes. that came out Thursday and Saturday to come in. Our star pupil is Amanda. She didn't get enough on Thursday. She came back on Saturday. And, and uh, she's a she's she's a professional cannon. So if you missed the canning dates, I know there were some of the ladies in this room that wanted to come, but were unable to because of schedule or anything that popped up. Talk to Miss Linda. It sounds like it was a great time. It was. it was so much fun. What I hear, they forgot to take pictures. So I had to come up with a couple of pictures for a Facebook post. But there are tomatoes to be eaten, I think. Canned tomatoes. So. Any others today? Pam. Um, yes. You said John and Bobby Joe. Oh, it's H A U G E N. Yeah, that's a different spelling. Do you know how to spell Bobby Joe? No. I'll approximate. <laughs> Bobby Joe. So stage two, stage three, colon cancer. Yeah. Mm. Tired of that C word. Anyone else today? Us. We need to all remember those people in Maui. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, our next door neighbor till last year for where she gave us, and we can check in with how they're doing yeah. Yeah. in Hawaii. So, yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. <clears throat> I know that when Harold
Harold shared a fire photo uh, yesterday from what you all did here. Somebody's do that in Hawaii because that's so prevalent right now mm -hmm. with the fire. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, I just want to bring up the Emmaus walk again mm -hmm. that's going to happen in the fall. Uh, it's slow going as far as getting people to go on the walk. So if you have, have it in your heart that you might want to go on the men's or women's walk, please see Corey or myself about that. Um, also, I want to pray for the two teams because the men's team, uh, he, he had his first formation meeting and he doesn't have all this team. So if you've already been on the walk and you feel like it's something you want to do, uh, just see us and we'll give the information because mm -hmm. they're struggling yeah. um, getting their team together. Uh, Corey and I have leadership team today for our first one. Uh, so just be in prayer for all of that because we just don't know what's going to happen to the Emmaus uh, walks. Yeah, we've shared future. with you about that. It's been a wonderful ministry in the rural area for 40 years, but um, we're hoping and praying that they don't go the direction of some church denominations that take this book and just kind of put it on a shelf. I don't think they're going to, but if they do, we'll be out. But yep. There are struggles. There are struggles. At the same time, we would encourage just about anybody here that is a solid Christian, not somebody brand new or the overwhelming, but a solid Christian that wants to grow in your leadership ability. That doesn't mean you're going to be made to be a leader, that you have to do something. But if you feel like, I want to take my Christian walk to another level, it's a great opportunity. There's Somewhere between 15 and 20 people in our church that have already been on it. And there's a, a plaque out there between all the pictures of baptisms with a painting of Jesus and a bunch of names. See any of those people. Your best friend in this church might be somebody that uh, could share with you about names better than Harry and me. Yep. So check that for your peace. And the church pays for the fee. For church you to go for the weekend. It's a nice right. little retreat. Yeah, it's, it's really nice. And you'll eat a lot, which is scary for those of us that are trying not to eat as much, but it's good. Any other prayer needs today? Yes, Susie. I'm just closing for my granddaughter. Um, <coughs> yes. Any others today? And just traveling yeah. mercies for our neighbor coming back from Europe. She'll right. be back tomorrow. She was in Hungary today, Budapest, yeah, Hungary. She's in Budapest, Hungary right now. Audriana Plum, she's been at our church one time yep. and is a, a godly woman, uh, a believer in the gospel. We'd love to have her here. But so her and her two children are there. At home in the Czech Republic and Hungary and right. Austria in the area of Eastern Europe. Right. So she'll be back tomorrow. So right. from traveling mercies. Uh, um, I have a friend, uh, her name This is Tammy Kelly, K E L L E Y. Remind us her name again. Shelby Smith. Shelby Smith. She was there with Danny and Shelby Smith on your list. Yeah, I see her. And she's an avid hunter. Loves your meat. Oh, man. Oh, man. So she can't eat her wild game. So, mm. 
the things he's been eating right now is like baked crappie and cabbage. I like both of those, but that's not enough. So will that run its course, Harold? No. As soon as you're she will have it the rest of her life. She's off red meat and most good. Gosh. And she hunting is one of her loves. So fish are okay. Some fish. Crappie's clean and white and yeah. mild. But it's supposed to be just mammal meat, but she can't eat chicken, which is poultry, not mammals. Mm. Wow. So there's more to it. She still has lots more fish to go. Oh. Uh -uh. Rare, sounds like. Any others today? Taylor. Lift up Andrea too. She's home with a headache after the stressors of that whole. Yeah, Andrea, uh, as Troy worry. mentioned, the escapades yesterday, which were hours and hours of fear and uh, stress and worry and anxiety, she's whooped. Troy is here simply to be able to address you all. He's whooped too. He came to represent. Prayers for Andrea and just the whole family. Uh, these folks are evil. Okay? Evil people trying to infiltrate your lives to manipulate you and steal from you. As we know in the Gospel of John chapter 10, the thief comes to destroy and kill. That's who he is. He uh, gave the Holder family a run for their money yesterday. Do we have any others to bring up? Now, Harry, are there any more online that have said a prayer need? I know there are folks online. There's people online. I'm not seeing any more. No more than Jane? Right. No more than Jane for prayer. Okay. Let's have a quiet time of prayer. Babies, you are allowed to keep cooing because it is beautiful. <coughs> the rest of us will be quiet. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the cooing of the babies. We thank you for praises that we have. For Thomas Sloan getting a job after a too long away. And for Ryan Sloan, his son, to continue to have more mobility in that hand. We pray for Jane Berry, who's here all the time and is uh, feeling under the weather today, can't be here. For Cammie Kelly, ripping her fingers so badly, uh, it's going to be a crisis. For Shay Bice, with her seizures, brain surgeries, now rotator cuff. And thank you for Tracy Wilson, still painful but blessed and coming through her surgery. For Cliff Stuckey, lots of things building up right now. Show them answers. For John and Bobby Joe Hogan, stage three, colon cancer. For Shelby Smith, with this very bizarre disease that will impact her with things that she loves. For Taylor Kelly's uncle and his struggles, but he needs help. Unspoken prayer needs for Susie's granddaughter. For all the folks in Hawaii and the good men and women that are fighting that tragedy of the fires right now, be with those there and those that are here to protect us as well as our EMTs and our armed forces and our police officers. And just be with Andrea as she's home and the family as they dealt with a very, very scary crisis, uh, criminal activity against their family. Pray for our church that, as it says at the bottom of the prayer list, that we grow in depth and numbers. Not just at Dream, but at every Bible-believing church throughout Henry County, surrounding counties, Kentucky, the United States, the world. If the Bible is being proclaimed, let that church grow. 
And it is in the name of Jesus we do pray. Amen. Amen. We have our uh, announcements and our celebrations right now. We have today, very special, we've got two birthdays this week of folks that are members of the church, part of the church, and they're both here. Now, am I right? Is this Intergalactic Kinsley Day? Is it your birthday, girl? How old are you? She's four. Got that? Four. Right there. Put that extra finger out because she has grown a finger today. Four. All right. It's also, I think, Patrick Holder's birthday. Am I right? Are you also four? 27. That's what I thought. We got one turning 27 next month. He's that many. Wesley, he's that many. We've got some more birthdays. Who do we have, Cindy? It just happened, but we haven't been able to sing to her yet. Brinley. How old is Brinley? Ten. Ten. We've got another ten-year-old right behind you, Taylor. And your birthday was, uh, was it the Friday before last? What was it? Was it in August? July 29th. So we haven't seen her since then. So we got to say, sorry, Brinley. We have to say happy birthday to Brinley and to Patrick and to Kinsley. Anybody else who's not listed? We have some new people that aren't even on our calendars yet. All right. We're going to sing happy birthday. God bless you. Because I can't say that many. Okay. And you have been on your trip. That's right. Harold, right after that. So he's July 30th, and they were enjoying the beaches of Mississippi, Alabama, Florida. You know where they all meet there at the bottom? So, Harold, too. So, we got, are you also four? <laughs> and holding. All right. Ten, four, 27, and also four. So, let's sing happy birthday. God bless you. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. And many, many, many more. Many, many more. Now we have an anniversary, too, at least one. And he's in the house. And Earl, is tomorrow your anniversary? Yes. How many blessed years? <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. Okay, yeah. How many years? 1,971 years. <laughs> and I will say, I believe that Mary Ann scrolled through on our video earlier, so yes. you better get this right. So 52 yeah. years, is that right? Yeah. 52 years. All right, so. We you haven't been here since yours either. So how many years? We know that's a big round number. 20 years. Remember, they had their vow renewal service on the 26th, right? That was their anniversary, and then they went, you know, Yep. Awesome. So we'll do a happy anniversary. God bless you again, because Carol and Stacy, Earl and Mary Ann. Are there any other anniversaries here that we don't have marked? And that's a good problem to have. All right. Same song, different words. Happy, happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary. God bless you. Happy anniversary to you. Into our announcements, we have some good things going on. Um, one, if you've got a bulletin, I think there's maybe a couple left if you don't have it. This is Luke Day, folks. I'm so glad Luke's here. And uh, we'd love to have more of you fill out the favorites. We have some papers of those back there on the front table. Last week we had Baby Owen, which it's amazing. He's so advanced, he can fill this out pick out things for himself. But, but Luke's there, and there's very interesting things about our young man, Luke. If you've not filled one out, please consider. We've got a book in the back there with everybody who has thus far. I really enjoy reading them, and I know it's a big thing. All right, things coming up this week. Uh, once that's happened just yesterday, the softball team, the team played great, and a lot of you were there. We've had a pretty stinky season, and I'll 
I'll just say that as a participant, I can say that we, we just haven't played well. And for whatever reason. But yesterday, they were hot stuff. And we couldn't have done anything better. We, we lost by one run on a controversial play to the team that won the tournament, Baghdad Baptist. We knocked out Henry Christian. We knocked out Franklinton Baptist. We ended up getting eliminated by Eminence Baptist. It was, it was great. So thanks to everybody here that played, everybody that's not here that played. It was, a, it was a fun time. We will probably have some more games in September, like we did last year, some Sunday afternoon uh, follow-off. <coughs> All right, things you see up there, The Chosen, Wednesday night. We'll have our third episode. Come watch. It's a good, good time. You can catch up on TV or on streaming if you haven't. You see up there also the volleyball picture. That will start in the beginning of October. We have several new players this year that are excited and were reminding me yesterday that we got to remember about volleyball. We will. You see the Louisville Bats, I really want today to be the last day to sign up and to confirm your number. Now, if you're already signed up on this clipboard, confirm your number because I'm going to call them tomorrow to the order the tickets that the church will pay for and then we, you know, we pay the church to reimburse. If you've not signed up, you want to be part of it, it's Saturday the 26th, so uh, two weeks from yesterday when we're going to be a great time. Cash Here, or make out checks to Drennan. Yeah, cash or checks to Drennan, exactly. Uh, another big thing I need to mention right now is that Sunday school, it's already August. We haven't started because we need a new stable of teachers. We've known this since May, that we've needed to add more teachers because of folks that can't do it this year or won't be around to it this year. If you want a Sunday school program to happen for our kids and for our adults, Please see me ASAP. And as a special bonus for that, don't feel like you have to teach a class by yourself. We want to make it available so that there can be a rotating stable of teachers like a lot of churches do, so that you don't have pressure on you each and every week to have to be here and have to prepare lessons. We want to put curriculum in your hands so that you have something solid to work with and Help equip you. So see me ASAP so we can start that up. It'll be a good time. And then lastly, you all heard about this briefly if you listen to the one call now. Two weeks from today, we're going to have a baby dedication and our kids too. We've been blessed here. You know it. We've got some of them in the room right now. I think that we have Owen. Sawyer, Buck, and Casper. Oh, we got to have a picture today, girls. we oh, got to have a picture. Got All four yeah. are here. Goosebumps. Okay, <laughs> we've been blessed by these bouncing baby boys, but that's not the only important children in our church, is it? Nope. If your family wants to have your kids prayed over by the church body, dedicate them to being brought up in the Lord two weeks from today is the day. Okay, it'll be during the service. I will cut a couple things out of the service so we have time. It's going to be great. Just to celebrate that this is a church family that loves their kids. So let's be part of that. All right, we're going to go into our fellowship time. Go see everybody. We have a special guest today. Back from the past, Anthony Goodrich is here. And, you know, his mom, Alice Ball, was a member here for decades. And we miss her. She passed away three years ago. Anthony's here, and we've got some more visitors today, too. Go see everybody and see those baby boys and our young kids. Let's go. Oh, I would have been
You tell your mom I said hello. I will. Like those, yeah, like those amber ones. Like, they're, they're just yeah. like oh, that's what the yeah. got. But they're four. Billy brought it to her. They're the size of a yeah. half it's a half. Yeah. And they're, you know, they're in great yeah. shape. Yeah. You know, they're old, yeah. but yeah. anyway, yeah. They're, they're fair game. I see, I feel like an auctioneer. Yeah. Take these dead, right. Yeah. 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 Just see me afterwards. You know I'm not going to remember right now. Blessed, blessed, blissfully, I get to sit down because we have a children's message today. So any kiddos and little ones, come on up and we can watch too. But Samantha's going to lead a children's message. So, kiddos, come on. Tell me what it is. Um, it's a sheep. He's enclosed. It's very close. He watches over the sheep, right? The shepherd is the guy that has the big staff, and he watches over the sheep. And does anybody know what his job is as far as watching over the sheep? What does he do? Well, he's got to protect All kinds of things, right? You never know what these sheep are going to get into. So, the reason I'm talking about sheep and shepherds today is because in the Bible, does anybody know what is the good shepherd? It talks about 
but the good shepherd doesn't mind know who that is. Anyone else who the good shepherd is? Mm -hmm. Jesus is called our good shepherd because we are his sheep and he watches over us, much like a shepherd would watch over his own sheep. So we're going to learn about this little guy today. Look, he fucked out. Don't make some help with this sheep. He's naughty and he runs away. Can anybody help me with this sheep? I think we can try with this turn. So Jesus told this story. Once a shepherd was watching his flock of sheep, one of the sheep wandered off. Do you want to be the first guy to wander his sheep? Do you see these little foot tracks here? He's leaving. Can we make him walk? All right, let's find out where the sheep's going. When night came, the shepherd counted 99 sheep come into the pen. One sheep was missing. Like some dangerous stuff over here. Yeah. It's not like it's gonna say cheap pen, is it? We got a lion, we got some wolves, some eagles. One of my sheep is missing, said the shepherd. I must go and find him. It's getting pretty far, isn't it? sheep had splashed through a stream and clambered over rocks. He had gone far away. Lost sheep, where are you, called the shepherd. The lost sheep just kept wandering further away. The sheep's getting around. Look, you see any dangers out here? We got some bats, we got some wolves. <laughs> it was dark. The sheep thought he heard a lion roar. He was lost and scared. It's Owen's, Owen's turn.
Remember, our offering is still in the back, in the table. You can visit that at any time. And, of course, our online viewers can send their tithes and offerings to Dragon Christian Church, P.O. Box 495, Newcastle, Kentucky, 40050. You can stand. Amanda and Cindy will lead us in the doxology.
keep our church a growing. Today, it's, people just kept pumping in, and we didn't get a final count until probably 1130. Keep people coming in. Keep people seeking after the gospel, going after the book. Lord, if we can have 69 here on a day when we know probably 15 folks are sick or on vacation or at work or doing this or that, praise God. Be with us now as we open up the Bible and continue worship together. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. May be seated. One more prayer concern I forgot to bring up. He didn't bring it up humbly. If you if you wonder about Phil's shiner, Trisha didn't do it. Okay? <laughs> During our four softball games, Phil had a battle with the ground, and the ground won, but he, he he would not stop pitching. In fact, he had blood all over his eye and his face, and like, I'm not coming out, I'm not coming out, I'm not coming out. So, just so you know, it wasn't Trisha. I don't think. But, uh, it's that's what you call dedication. Yeah. Well, Diana, I'm not that. that. So, that's on you. All right, I'm going to go into our teaching time now, and what we have on the, the picture on the bulletin, I know, is, is a mess, it's awful, it's a terrible picture, and I bet some of you know that story. It's a really good painting, and I went ahead and used it, even though it is a dark moment in church history. Now, I'll remind you that right after, or right at our baptism Sunday a month plus ago, I said, we give out Bibles. We tell people to start reading at the Gospel of John, so how about I do that too and give you the opportunity? So I went through the Gospel of John every day for 21 days, ended the month of July with that, and said, let's just keep reading the book of Acts every two days a chapter. So I'm up to chapter 7 as of yesterday. This story is from chapter 7. Now what's going on is that after Jesus has ascended, the day of Pentecost has come, the Holy Spirit has come down upon the believers... It's growing. They don't have 69 at their house of worship. They've got 5,000 at this point. It's ridiculous. And as you can imagine, that's a logistical problem. What are you going to do with 5,000 people? We have a hard enough time with 60-something with people sometimes. 5,000 people. So, some were grumbling about their needs being served. Those that had needs in the church community and said there's not enough people serving us. So the apostles decided we're going to appoint seven honorable, trustworthy men of the community and of the congregation to basically be the helpers. To deal with the meals, deal with the needs in the house. One of those seven guys was named Stephen. A young man who had already proven himself in the early new church as being worthy of that title. Well, that left more time for the teachers and the pastors to teach and to pray and to deal with the spiritual needs of the community. Folks like Stephen, he was a helper, but Stephen was full of the Spirit, full of the Word of God all the time, each and every day. And some folks already couldn't stand that. Now think about that a minute. This is almost 2,000 years ago. People couldn't stand the man who had the word of God coming out of his mouth. He couldn't stop proclaiming the word. Now, he's handing out meals, basically. But he's got the word in his heart. He knows what's happened with Jesus. And he's proclaiming that gospel. And there's already people mad. So mad at him, even though they know what he says is true, they start making up lies slanders about Stephen. He's done nothing but serve and proclaim. Eventually, these grumblers, these liars, essentially, take it to the high council of the Jews. And they want him tried in front of this council for a bunch of cooked up charges. Now remember, he's innocent, he's done nothing, but they cooked up a bunch of charges to get Stephen stopped. A man who's helping the community, proclaiming the gospel. Oh, we can't have that. Does that sound like 2023 just a little bit? It's coming. If it's not 2023, it'll be 2024, 25 and following. People don't want the name of Jesus proclaimed. 
You probably remember about 10 years ago or so when the Robertsons got famous for their Duck Dynasty show, A&E Network told them, you can say your prayer around that table, just don't say the name of Jesus. You can pray whatever you want, just don't say the name of Jesus. And then Patriarch Phil said, then we won't have the show. I'm saying Jesus. You cut what you want. I'm saying it. Well, they usually left me in. I guess there was one sensible person at that network. But nobody wants to hear that name. So, when Stephen goes to the council, they ask him, what do you have to say? And what Stephen do, and I ask you to read this in chapter 6 and 7 on your own, he basically goes through the entire history of the church. He tells exactly what's happened all the way from Genesis up to now. And he pretty much ends it with what we read in the call to worship that now he read us, or led us in. Essentially, we have sullied God's house. You Pharisees, you high council, have destroyed the work of God for your own doing. Now this is a bold young man. He's usually depicted as someone maybe in his 20s or so. And he's saying, y'all have been killing Jesus. He was the king. He is the king. He is the king to come. Y'all killed him. And so the picture you see on the screen is what they decided to do to him. Let me read this bit of the text. This is the end of chapter 7, starting at verse 54. It says, when they heard these things... The things he described about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Moses, all the way up. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. Because the word is living and active. It's like a double-edged sword. You know it is. It goes right inside of you, and it cuts you to the heart. And after the comment says, and they gnash at him with their teeth. It's like they're hissing at him. Because the story he's telling them, they know it's true. And they know, as the Jewish leaders, that the words he is saying are fulfillment of the prophecies that they're teaching. For thousands of years, Judaism has been growing and thriving based on the prophecies of what is to come. Jesus has fulfilled them all, and they won't have it. As I've told you, Imagine if that door opened again and our 70th person today was Jesus. And he came into this place and I said, hold on, Jesus. Wait 10, 15 more minutes because I got a really good sermon. That's essentially what they were doing. They don't want the real Savior to come in because they're too busy pontificating about how great they are. Telling the people in the synagogue and the temple how amazing they are. They're in power. They like it. It sure tastes good. Jesus, you wait out on the porch. In fact, if you want to get back in your car, just drive on back where you come from. They gnashed their teeth. But he, Stephen, being full of the Holy Spirit, remember this is after Pentecost, the Holy Spirit has come down on believers. And they are filled. And I hope you feel full. I hope you feel filled by that same spirit. He gazed into heaven. And saw the glory of God. He's getting ready to meet God. He saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And said, look. I see the heavens opened. And the Son of Man standing at the right hand. Because this is a moment. He's just a few seconds from meeting him. God in his love and his providence has opened up those heavens and said, Stephen, we're ready for you. We want you with us. They're going to kill you. Jesus, who's at the right hand of God up there, they just killed him. Stephen's coming too. Then they cried out. The leaders cry out with a loud voice, stopped their ears, and ran at him with one accord. They're like, la 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 They can't handle it because they know what's true. They know what's true all along. They've been cut to the heart, but they still won't have it. And since Stephen's the one who is proclaiming it, knowing, knowing that he's going to die, 
Oh, they got to kill him, and they got to kill him fast. They got to stop their ears. It's comical, the image, except it's not. They are ridiculous clowns in charge of the religion. It says they cast him out of the city. This can't happen on, you know, not a city streets. And they stoned him. So that picture you have, I, I went back and forth for a couple days about whether I should put that on there. But I thought, yeah, I want this to be hardcore Bible church. So that young man kneeling on the ground. Shows a bunch of men with big rocks. Get ready to take him out. Set one guy. Who could that be? And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. Remember him? He's got another name too, doesn't he? What's his other name? Do you know it? Paul, that's right. He was Saul to the Jews and Paul to the Gentiles. They laid their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul and they stoned Stephen as he was calling on God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. So he's looking at Jesus. Do you get that? He's looking at the throne of God because they've opened up the heavens for him special to see. Receive my spirit as he's being Beaten by rocks to death. <coughs> then he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not charge them with this sin. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. And of course, that's a biblical term many times for passing away. Even as he's dying, Murdered by the men that are supposed to be the leaders of the temple, the leaders of the synagogue, the leaders of their faith. He said, don't charge them with this. Don't do it, God. He has a heart of forgiveness. He has a heart of God. He is full with the Holy Spirit. Now, I've said in the bulletin that I'm stopping at Acts 7, 60, but in looking one more time, one more time this morning, I'm putting the first three verses of eight. Listen to it. It's... It gripes my goat, if you know a Henry County term. It says, now Saul was consenting to his death. The guy standing with the cloaks at his feet, the young protege, their favorite young Pharisee. He's going to be the man in the future. He consented to his death. At that time, a great persecution rose against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea. And Samaria, except the apostles. So they were scattered because of what happened to Stephen. Everybody's like, whoa, I'm out. Except the apostles. So remember that 3,000 plus 2,000 more 5,000, they're scattered. Except those 12. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering every house and dragging off men and women, and committing them to prison. And I'll stop right there. Now think about Saul, Paul, later on. He's as bad as it gets, as you see right there. They are stoning Stephen, who all he did was serve meals to the witness. And proclaim Jesus' name. So well, we got to kill him. We got to kill him. And so Saul goes from house to house and wants to stop you and you and you from believing this stuff. Don't think this is just a Bible story, okay? I don't like to get political. I don't like to quote the news and all that stuff. And I'm not going to right now. But if you don't see that stuff upcoming and happening already, 
Get ready because it will be. There will be more martyrs. There's martyrs all over the world right now. You've heard stories. We know about people who've been killed for their faith overseas. I know Miss Linda does. She's got people overseas who have lost her life. But it's going to happen here. Okay? It's going to happen here. It could happen to some of us. Do you care that much about your faith in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, who we just took Holy Communion about his body and his blood, that if you are put into Stephen's position, that you will stand firm. Be ready to embrace the arms of the Savior and even say, Lord, don't hold it against me. I hope and pray that our church can be that type of church where we're not just playing Christianity, where we're not just coming to church to feel better about ourselves, that we're not going into the water to be baptized just to no reason, but that we mean what we say we believe. And that when this type of event happens here in America or wherever else, this year, next year, or in the future, that Stephen, we will fight like him and speak the truth. When someone says, what do you got to say, Stephen, huh? You going to recant? Do you want to clarify your comments? That's a big thing right now. Is anybody who says truth, they get challenged. You have to clarify your comments by saying some malarkey to be politically correct. Stephen says, no, this is what happened. We'll start with Adam and Eve and Noah and Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and Moses. We'll all go through the story, and there it is, and you all are messing it up. So if you're going to kill me, I see Jesus right up there. He's waiting for me. Pray God. I invite you all to be part of this church with that. This is a time of invitation. This is a time when Amanda and Cindy are going to lead us through one more him and the hymn we chose last week we had a board meeting and it, it was mentioned you know what would be a good one right now onward christian soldiers a song that many churches don't want to sing anymore because don't want to offend somebody we said soldier it talks about war it talks about a fight and if you don't think you're in a spiritual battle a spiritual fight well just ask me i'll let you know okay you are you are we're going to stand and this is a time of invitation Anybody that says, I got to go in that water because I believe, I got to join this church because I'm ready. I got to rededicate my life because mine has been in a dumpster fire. And you know it and I know it and everybody knows it. I have to admit it to myself. This is the time. So as the ladies lead us, I'll be standing down here.
let's gather around the outside. We now our benediction prayer. Everybody joining together as a church family.